I've had a lot of people ask, how do I use a Sonoff to do a three-way switch? If you're not an electrician, understanding what's going on with a three-way switch can be kind of confusing. But the good news is, using a Sonoff and Home Assistant makes it quite a bit easier. There are probably a bunch of different ways to do this, but I'm going to show you how I did it. First thing you have to do is determine exactly the switch situation that you have. Most likely, you have a hallway with lights down the middle and a switch at each end, or a room with switches at different entrances. If you have two switches, that is just one at each end, or one at each entrance to the room, then that's what we call a three-way switch in the US, or a two-way switch if you're in the UK or some other more advanced civilization. Now, if you have three switches or more that are controlling the same lights, then that's a four-way switch. You can still use a Sonoff and Tasmoda and Home Assistant, but the wiring is gonna be a little different. If you don't know what a three-way switch is or how it works, or a four-way switch or how it works, then it's totally worth a few minutes to go watch these videos and things will make a lot more sense. What I'm gonna show you how to do is primarily a software solution. That is, the function of the three-way switch is actually going to be happening in Home Assistant, not in the switch itself. In my example, I had a four-way switch set up. So each of my Sonoffs is going to have power coming from the circuit breaker into the input side, but only one of the Sonoffs is going to be connected to the lights. The others are simply going to be sending MQTT messages to Home Assistant. And then in an automation, we'll tell Home Assistant to turn on or turn off the one Sonoff that is actually connected to the lights. Why use a Sonoff? Why not just use a D1 Mini or a Node MCU board? Well, the answer is you could totally do that. You could totally just set up some kind of a Wi-Fi connected button that would send a message to Home Assistant and it would work the same. The reason I'm using the Sonoffs are number one, because I have a bunch and they're very inexpensive. Number two, with Tasmoda, I know how to use them. I know how to control them. I don't have to write a new Arduino sketch and deal with all of the potential complications or problems that might come up from that. And three, because the Sonoffs run on mains voltage. So I don't have to provide a five volt or a three volt power supply in order to power my Wi-Fi button. I actually think this is a pretty simple solution. I tried thinking about how could you hook up the GPIO pins or somehow make a mechanical three-way switch out of a standard Sonoff, but that seemed way more complicated and this works. So the first thing you have to do is flash all your Sonoffs. In my case, I've got three. So I flash Tasmoda onto all three Sonoffs, set them up with different MQTT topic names, and then set them up in Home Assistant as switches. So go to your configuration.yaml file and set up a new switch for each Sonoff. What I did was name the switch that has the lights connected to it so that it would be labeled on the button on my Home Assistant page. Now two of the switches, I'm never gonna want to turn on or off directly with a button in Home Assistant, so I'll make them hidden. For this automation, we're gonna have multiple triggers. Every time one of the other buttons gets pushed, that's gonna be a trigger. Okay, to set up the triggers, you want the state of the switch that's not connected to the lights to go from on to off as one trigger. But you want another trigger for that same switch when it goes from off to on. That way, anytime that button gets pressed, it fires the trigger. And for the action, we call the service switch toggle, which is fantastic because it doesn't matter if it was on or off at the beginning, it's just going to set it to whatever state it wasn't already in. And the entity ID is the name of the Sonoff that you have connected to the lights. And that's it. Save and make sure you reload automations. Now, as I always say, lay it all out and test it and make sure that it works. So here's my Sonoffs, one connected to a light, the other not connected to the light. And this is how they work. And now that I know that my automation works, I'm ready to install everything in the switch boxes. To do this project, you're gonna have to get into your switch boxes. So be smart and go turn off the breaker first. Now, unless you built your house yourself, there's no way to be entirely sure what exactly is going on behind the walls. You can hope that your builder did things the way he should have, but there's no guarantee. So I'm gonna recommend that you test and make sure that what you think should be in the walls is really what's in the walls. So that's gonna mean opening up your switch boxes, pulling the switches out, and getting a good look at the wires that are in there. What you need to find are the wires that are coming from the circuit breaker, the wires that are going to the lights, and then there should be a set of three wires coming into the box, in the US at least, that set of three wires will have a black, a white, and a red. In the first switch box I took apart, I found a pair of black and white wires coming into the box where the black wire was connecting to the switch and the white wire was connecting to the neutrals in the box. I figured that pair was either gonna be going to the lights or coming from the circuit breaker, and I didn't know which. So with the circuit breaker off, I started testing. I got out my multimeter and I put it on the setting that gives you a beep 
if your probes are connected to a closed circuit. I unscrewed a light bulb. I then took one probe and put it on the white wire that I was hoping would go to the lights. I took the other probe and put it in the light socket. When I heard a beep, I knew that the white wire in the box was going to the light. And then I did the same thing for the black. One probe on the black wire that was paired with the white and then put the other probe in the light socket on the other contact point and I heard a beep. So at that point I knew that that black and that white wire were the ones feeding the lights. Fantastic. Now in one of my other switch boxes, there was a bundle of black wires and a bundle of white wires. If you see something like that, that probably means that those wires are coming from your circuit. And the reason is when they're bundled together like that, it means they're probably heading off out of the box to provide power to another room, other lights, receptacles, something like that. Now in order to make sure that those wires were the hot wires, I had to turn the breaker back on, get my voltmeter out, set it to AC voltage detection, and touch the wires with my probes. And it said 120 volts, and nothing blew up. So now I'd identified which wires are coming from my circuit and which wires are going to the lights. All I had left was the red, white, and black wires that were going between the switches. So I knew I had power coming into that switch box from the circuit breaker, but I needed to get power to my other switch boxes to be able to power the Sonoffs. So in order to do that, I took the white wire from the set of three wires and tied it in with the rest of the neutrals. And then I did the same with the black. And what that did was give me a hot wire and a neutral wire straight from the circuit breaker in each of my switch boxes. The red wire now is just extra, so I'm just gonna clip it off and leave it in the box. So when you're sure you know which wires go to the lights and which wires come from the circuit breaker and you've got mains power going to each switch box now you're ready to connect your sonoffs and install them in the boxes unlike what i've done in the past this time i decided i would try and keep the box on the sonoff and i thought i'd try using the solid wire instead of flexible wire it was more difficult no doubt but i think it worked out fine and in the end it's probably safer the hardest part was stuffing the Sonoff back in the box. Now for my push buttons, I used my fancy little flush chrome buttons that I've really come to love. I needed to have a 16 millimeter hole. I was doing this on New Year's Day, late in the evening, and the hardware store wasn't open. I had one blank switch box cover, so I drilled a 16 millimeter hole in it for one of my switches. But I didn't have a new switch box cover for my other two switches. So I did what any normal person would do. I quickly designed and 3D printed a wall plate adapter that fit in the hole that was left by my old switches and had a 16 millimeter hole for my new push button switches. Cause that's what we do. So now we've got our Sonoffs connected. We've got our automation written. Let's see if it works. It'll either work or it'll explode. I like that. That should be like my tagline. Well, that's it. We did it. As always, thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful to you. Until next time, adios.